Money laundering saga surrounding the Pima County Sheriff's Department has taken another turn. The Arizona Attorney General's Office is now investigating the misuse of RICO funds in the department. That's money seized from criminals to fight crime. This comes several months after former Chief Deputy Chris Ratke faced several felony charges that were knocked down to three misdemeanors. Ratke walked away with no prison time and his pension intact, an outcome that outraged many in the Sheriff's Department as well as the community. Sheriff Mark Napier made the request for an outside probe just days after we exposed details in this case. Investigative reporter Valerie Cavazos joins us now with a two-part series tonight. And Val, you've worked very hard on this. You've examined more than a thousand pages of memos, emails, as well as receipts. Yeah, it's uh, been a long road. And I pushed for these re uh, documents, and there's plenty of them, um, through the Freedom of Information request. Now, I've received a few denials and delays. I finally received the records, the same documents that were used in the FBI investigation. Now, two weeks ago, we exposed extravagant awards uh, ceremonies had been paid for with RICO funds. And the two former sheriffs, Clarence Stupnik and Chris Nanos, played a part. And because they requested the RICO funds that were put in a hidden account totaling three quarters of a million dollars. Whistleblowers have said the records show a flagrant disregard for the law by those who uphold the law. Tonight, we show you what's inside the same documents to be investigated by the Attorney General's office, and you're about to see who else was involved. The request for access to RICO funds came in a few forms, like this formal request for a chalkboard costing $500, and this not-so-formal email demand, give me $300, from then-Captain Chris Racky. Those specific requests, in part, led to Racky's federal indictment on charges of misusing RICO money, hundreds of thousands of dollars put in a disguised Sheriff's Auxiliary Volunteers account to avoid the same scrutiny had every expenditure appeared on the department's general funds ledger. One of the first whistleblowers, Sergeant Kevin Kabiski, who is on the union board, says those requests are just the tip of the iceberg. Racky admitted in court the money laundering scheme had gone on for nearly two decades. Do you know whether there are people inside the department who knew exactly what was going on and did not report it? Yes. The board is aware of several that were deeply involved that uh, did not report it. Sergeant Kabitsky couldn't name names and the plea deal didn't require Racky to give up any names. But the U.S. Special Attorney prosecuting the case confirmed. This has been going on for 18 years now. Multiple police officers, including those in higher leadership positions, but we did not have the evidence against them. So who was involved? Take a look at this 2013 Sheriff's Department memo written by Financial Administrator Ron G after an internal review. It reveals Sheriff's Command staff has oversight and authority to expend the fund's resources. This organizational chart that year shows all the names and positions of the command staff, 39 lieutenants, captains, and chiefs. We searched through the 2013 records and found 15 people, highlighted in yellow, who requested money, including top command. And now, highlighted in yellow, the names of the command staff, seven total, who approved the requests. Let's take a look at one of Racky's three misdemeanor counts of theft. Remember that give me $300 demand? Racky had asked for the money in advance for a recognition lunch at a restaurant with 18 guests. Records reveal he later returned $50. We found at least 150 similar requests by about three dozen deputies and staff, with most of the RICO funds for those requests flowing through a sub-account, food and refreshment fund, and petty cash, totaling at least $10,000 over several years. Departments show the Sheriff's Command staff approved food and beverages for staff promotions, retirement, employee of the quarter ceremonies, business lunches, special recognitions, and dayaways like this one for the patrol division in 2015 at a cost of $450. There was always training going on at these functions and uh, the purpose of the day away is to specifically address certain types of training that you normally wouldn't get. But the day aways didn't always involve training that helps deputies fight crime. We discovered day aways for annual special awards ceremonies, like this one, that cost nearly $1,500 for food. Staff also requested money for business lunches that the sheriff hosted, often here. 
For example, in 2011, Clarence Dupnick's executive coordinator formally requested $250 in advance for a border sheriff's luncheon. Records show dozens of similar requests from staff dating back to 2010. In that 2013 memo, Ron G. warned former Sheriff Dupnick, Chief Brad Gagnapane, and Captain Carl Woolridge that federal guidelines for food and beverages were fairly restrictive in regards to RICO funds and to consider limiting petty cash expenditures to training events and field operations. So why not have that come out of the general funds if RICO laws deem that permissible? It's a good question. And it's a question we'll answer. There's uh, much more revealed in these documents. And this is only about a third of what I've received. Now, coming up at six, uh, we'll find out if top commanders headed the or heeded the warnings on RICO funds. Okay, Valerie, we'll be watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.